this world may carry on busy and rushed as ever, and you may gather questions that have no easy answers, but may you never lose your wonder and the fire that burns deep to walk through crowded streets and observe the most beautiful and seemingly insignificant things. One of the most frequently asked questions that I get has something to do with our morning routine. Our morning routine, our schedule, our rhythm, whatever you would like to call it, to instill this sense of wonder um, and sense of slowness into each of my children. So I thought that I would share my productive 5 a.m. morning routine. Kind of 5 a.m. morning routine. <laughs> I hesitated to share because you always have goals and my goal has been to wake up at 5 a.m. since forever and it's a hard one there's different seasons of motherhood and it's just hard for me I'm not really a morning person but I like the slowness and the stillness and the crisp air of the morning but as rushed as the morning can be or can become um, it's not me. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, so I've been trying to find ways for an early morning routine that invites stillness and invites quiet. And in that, I think it's been pretty successful. I've been trying to discipline myself to um, just have a bit more structure to my morning routine. But I love the way the kids' morning routine pans out and what it's become over the years. There are four things that I consider when it comes to how we spend our mornings. What time will you wake up? This one is an ever-rotating thing for me because I'm always trying to get up at 5 a.m. and I'm always failing. But um, I have learned in order to develop a routine um, to give myself space and grace to do so, for it to actually become a natural rhythm. So the first thing that I consider is around what time I'd like to wake up. If I wake up at 5 a.m., then my reward is a nice warm beverage. I am on the hunt to find something that I actually like. For now, um, I will do a little bit of coffee or a little bit of tea, but I haven't really found a warm beverage that I really, really enjoy. And that's gonna kind of be my mission for waking up at 5 a.m. I think one of the things I had to think about is why, like why do I want to wake up so early? And yes, um, I would like a little bit of quiet time um, before the kids wake up. Um, but I found that in the past, trying to rush to beat them awake, but I was super sleepy and unrested, wasn't a good fit for me. But now I'm at this season where I have identified very specific wise as far as what I want to accomplish and um, what fits in during that time like what can I actually accomplish at that time and for me it is editing and writing um, waking up early gives me quiet space that is really conducive for a nice quiet editing or writing time so that is my why making my bed is on the list <laughs> it's another one of those very small rewards um, that I give myself once I get through another portion of my early morning routine. So Savannah normally joins me in this. We all have our separate little morning routines. Um, there are a list of things that we need to get done, like brushing our teeth and washing our face and making our bed and getting dressed. But the order in which they do them is totally up to them. It's just quiet time and quiet space for them to be able to pick out their clothes, 
and do a few things that they want to do in there. I don't pick out their clothes. I allow them to do this themselves, which can be problematic in some cases. So if I need them to be dressed for going somewhere or something like that, I may pick them out or I may, we may pick them out together the night before. But overall, they dress themselves. <laughs> Once they are dressed, Savannah normally heads in to be with her mama and she helps me make my bed and then they get started on a few morning activities. Morning. just sets the scene and is a really good indicator that we're moving into other portions of our day. Again, these activities promote stillness and quiet and a nice slow rhythm that I like to achieve during our mornings. So, our morning activities usually consist of morning work, morning basket, and morning walk. thing around here. I remember a mom share about how important breakfast was to her and how she had envisioned making these beautiful breakfasts for her kids and she wanted them to have that memory. And I thought it was so sweet and so special and something I definitely wanted to implement. And so I was always trying to do this thing, this thing that actually was a dream or a goal for some one else and I ask myself what is important to me and what's most important to me is that they have a level of independence and a level of quietness and self-care of sorts it's one of those things that's really easy for kids to learn how to do independently so whether it is cold cereal with milk or oatmeal or fruit with boiled eggs um, breakfast is normally an independent thing that sometimes one will make a little bit for the other but overall it's just one of those things that I allow them to have their own natural rhythm. For our morning work, these are the activities I like them to engage in um, after breakfast or before breakfast, just totally up to them. But there are things like brain and logic work, um, which are just simple games that we can play together like tic-tac-toe or connect four or um, logic games like cat crimes they've been really into lately. Um, so they will get out a few of those games and get to that. Sometimes they like to read or do their um, quiet reading time work during the morning activity or the morning basket time. So they'll do that. The next thing that they do typically happens after after our morning walk time, um, which consists of filling out their weather um, report in their binders and a few other small things, small tasks that they can get accomplished and check off and feel like they um, are making their way through their morning. Our most favorite part of the morning is the morning walk. At least it's become my most favorite and I think it's their favorite too. When we get out into the fresh air, no matter what this season is, whether it's rain, sleet or snow, <laughs> mostly hoping that there's sunshine of course. We put on our jackets, put on our shoes, and we make a really quick little walk around our neighborhood. And that lets everybody know that now it's time to head into our school day.
Dinosaurs are now. <laughs> To me, the key to having a successful morning routine or schedule or rhythm is to decide what is most important to you. For us, it's peace above all else. I want that stillness. I want that quiet of the morning, that space for them to, to have and sit with their own thoughts and um, observe in a quiet space before the day really starts to get going so peace is our number one priority um, and if that means that we wake up at 7 o'clock or 7 30 or even a little later at 8 with a slow rhythm just to keep the peace then that is what we want to do I feel like as homeschoolers it's something we are afforded the ability to choose when we wake up and what we do when we wake up and it's a really wonderful thing uh, and then the next two things are kind of similar, but togetherness and maximizing memories. This time, um, this was part of our night routine for the day. Um, but Brian has been doing read aloud time with the kids, which to me was a decision that we made, um, something that we try to do um, before he gets ready for his work day, just to kind of promote togetherness and maximize those moments where we can create memories for the kids. Um, it only takes 15 minutes. We just try to find those little pockets of time. If he doesn't have to leave the house until a little later in the day, then sometimes he goes on our morning walk with us. Any of the things that we can think about that will maximize those moments and those memories and promote togetherness but peace above all else, that is what we want in our morning routine and schedule. Betty is four, Rosin is 12, Sky is 11, and Jane is 10. Maybe we'll just discover something wonderful while we're lost, said Jane. Well, it starts with the letter B, the next letter in alphabet. Sky was the only one year younger than she was, but it might quiet her long enough for Rosin to concentrate. He was a professor of botany. What does that mean? Uh, one major helpful thing for me is if we wake up later in the day, we start exactly where the time frame indicates. And then when we have little pockets of time throughout the day, we put those things that we missed in the morning and plug them into little pockets during the rest of our day. This really helps us not to feel like we're behind all the time and I know that might not work for everybody but I found that jumping right into that time frame is most helpful for us just because something is assigned to time doesn't mean it has to stay there first word is cry okay next word is sigh very good whisper I 
like to create our schedule or our rhythm or our routine on our iCal, which makes it very easy for us to just pick up that scheduled activity and move it somewhere else if it needs to be. This really creates room for flexibility and leaves lots of room for for discovery and exploration because you know that's our thing. <laughs> Thanks for watching another Falco family film and I will see you in the next one.